Voters in Taiwan shrugged off warnings from China and re-elected the ruling party for a third consecutive presidential term. It's a vote that could have major consequences for U.S. relations with China. CNN's Will Ripley has more. History on the streets of the Taiwanese capital tonight. Thousands of people are out here listening to the first words of their new president-elect, Lai Qingda, and his, their vice president-elect, Xiao Bi Kim. Uh, this is their first press conference after confirming uh, that they have accepted uh, their election win. Uh, the two opposition parties, the parties that were considered friendlier to China, both conceded uh, earlier in the evening on Saturday. The election results came through relatively quickly, just a few hours after the polls closed here in Taiwan. Uh, this this island democracy has a reputation for being very efficient when it comes to tallying the election results, partially because there are uh, just under 24 million people living here and nobody can uh, vote in absentee ballots. So everybody who cast their ballots, the millions of Taiwanese who voted, actually had to do so in person in their hometowns. But a lot of people turned out. There were just under 2,000 polling sites here in Taipei alone, and there were lines at a lot of them throughout the day uh, because of what is at stake in this election. China uh, had told the Taiwanese people warning them in the run-up to this election that this was a choice between peace and war, prosperity and decline, implying that the Democratic Progressive Party, which is openly loathed by Beijing's communist leaders, uh, is the wrong choice in China's view to lead Taiwan for the next four years. And they've been making their point not only with uh, bellicose statements, uh, but also with actions, including just in recent days sending spy balloons over Taiwan, uh, unveiling imagery of their third most advanced aircraft carrier, one of the most advanced in the world that experts say once it completes sea trials would play a vital role in any potential invasion of Taiwan, which China has never ruled out, as they say that they will eventually reabsorb this island as part of their territory, even though the communist rulers in Beijing have never actually controlled it. And of course, uh, there's always the looming threat. But people here, the supporters of the Democratic Progressive Party, say that's exactly why they've decided to give the DPP four more years in Taiwan, because they believe that the party's uh, strategy of a close alignment with the United States, prioritizing military uh, diplomatic and economic ties with the U.S. Uh, is, is the way to protect Taiwan from a Chinese attack as opposed to the opposition's argument that, in fact, uh, re-mending fences with China, rebuilding that relationship and recalibrating the U.S. relationship would have been the way to dial down the temperature and avoid a cross-strait conflict. But Taiwan has made its decision a third historic consecutive presidential term for the ruling party, the DPP. Will Ripley, uh, thank you so much. And just a short time ago, China responded to the election results. The foreign ministry saying the election does not change their view that Taiwan is part of China. Let's get more now on this historic election. Bonnie Glazer is the director of the Asia program at the German Marshall Fund. Uh, so great to see you. So with China's response there, uh, I mean, are they signposting something about what they believe should be next? I thought Beijing's response was relatively moderate. They reiterated that unification is inevitable, uh, but also said that they look forward to working with some political parties in Taiwan. Of course, that means probably every political party other than the winning uh, Democratic Progressive Party. But there were really no new threats in the statement that was issued by the Taiwan Affairs Office in Beijing. It's probably a placeholder, so we'll have to see what steps they came, that they take in the weeks and months to come. Um, and the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, you know, says he's looking forward to working with Dr. Lei ching you know, after Lei won uh, the presidential election. Um, what does that say, or how is that received uh, if you are China? I think that China expects nothing less than that the United States will continue to strengthen ties with Taiwan. I would also note that President Biden had a statement as well. And what he said was a, a reaffirmation of U.S. policy that the United States does not support Taiwan independence. And that's a message that China has heard before. It doesn't necessarily uh, uh, think that it is credible, but it's important for them to hear. And I think that it does, to some extent, reduce the possibility that they will react very strongly in the near term. And I think it was intended to reassure. In what way might it be an obstacle uh, be between the U.S. and China as it tries to you know, resume operations uh, and, and relations? 
I think that uh, Taiwan, of course, has long been a uh, a uh, issue in the U.S.-China relationship where we've had very sharp differences. And uh, the two presidents, Xi Jinping and President Biden, speak very directly to each other about Taiwan. Uh, and they met in November at the Woodside Summit. And my understanding is that they had a very candid exchange. Uh, I believe that Xi Jinping wants to preserve uh, the fragile stability that has been achieved in the U.S.-China relationship. He is probably focused on the economic headwinds and corruption in the PLA. I just don't think he wants a conflict uh, with Taiwan at this point. And uh, he doesn't really want to upset uh, the improving relationship with the United States, even though we probably has low expectations. Do you feel like Taiwanese feel more emboldened now? We heard our Will Ripley there saying that, you know, voters say that this was a choice of peace over war. And now that this is a historic third consecutive win, uh, what does that say for Taiwan's posture? I don't think that the new president, Lai Chengde, and his vice president-elect, of course, um, uh, Bi Kim Xiao, who's been the representative from Taiwan in the United States for several years, I don't think that they are going to be emboldened to pursue uh, independence. We have really heard both of them reaffirm that they will continue the policies of the current president, Tsai Ing-wen, that is preserving the cross-strait status quo. And I think they both realize that they only won 40 percent of the vote. That means that 60 percent of the people in Taiwan voted for one of the other candidates. The DPP ruling party also lost its majority in the legislature. And so it will be more difficult to pass laws going forward as a result. And so this is going to be, um, I think, a challenge uh, for the DPP. But I think their priority will be continuing to strengthen ties with the United States, with the rest of the world. And I don't think they want to rock the boat in relations with Beijing. All right, Bonnie Glazer, we'll leave it there for now. Thank you so much. Thank you.